Okay, guys, I'm going to get ready to get started. Hello, hello. Hey, Linda. Hey, Erica. Hey, Erica, I'm glad you made it too. I'm glad you made it to a live stream. So I'm going to get ready to get started. I am, um, first of all, so behind. I just got home, but I said I need to go live and do exam practice. I've had so many of you guys asking me when I'm going to do another exam practice. So um, I will tell you guys, I only have just a few questions tonight and I'll do some Q&A. I don't have a lot of, um, I didn't have a lot of time. I literally just got home like an hour ago, like a little after five o'clock. So I wanted to just get some uh, material together real quick just to go live and try to help some of you guys um, tonight. So let me know if you have any questions. Hey, Linda, we have two Lindas. Okay. Hey, Linda, Linda and Erica. So I'm going to get ready to get started. Just let me know where you're watching from and your and your um, current status. Are you currently a student or are you already NMA? Just let me know. Hey, Miss 412, baby, you made it. So I, <laughs> I know I'm late. I have not done exam practice in a while. I was just telling them I literally just got home and just got a few things together. I think it may be about 10 questions for you guys today. I just got home uh, about an hour ago and tried to get something together really quickly, but I'm going to go through those questions, through those, um, through, through, through these few exam practice review questions, and then I will do some Q&A if anybody has any questions. So I didn't have time to add my shout outs to the slides like I normally do. So I'm going to share my other screen and I'm going to actually shout you out. I was able to upload the pictures, but I wasn't able to get them in the presentation, so I'm going to do a little bit differently. And there, there was a lot of you. I'm so late that it's so many people that I need to shout out. I need to get caught up. So let me just stop sharing this screen for a minute. And then let me share this screen over here. Let me see. I need to share these pictures that I have on my computer. Let me see. Um, oh, man, is it going to make me share my whole window? Wait a minute. I don't want to share my whole window. Hold on one second, guys. Let me figure this out. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and um, close some of this stuff out since it's making me share my whole window. Um, hold on one second. Yeah, it's making me share my whole window. So let me just... Um, Alrighty, so let me shout everybody out. I'm going to go through this quickly. So I want to shout out, she's just now, nice. she's a regular here. So I don't know if she's on here tonight, but congratulations. She's just now, nice. she's normally on here. She passed her CCMA. Amanda, congratulations. Angelina passed her CCMA. Congratulations. Brianna, Shania, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, Case Closed Media, congratulations. Bailey, Tori, congratulations. Michelle. Um, are you guys seeing this window? Oh, I don't, I don't think you guys are seeing my window. Hold on. Yeah, you guys are not seeing my window. Let me figure this out. Sorry, guys. Let's see. Let me stop sharing this. And then let's see. Window. Okay, yeah, this is not... Um, let me see. I'm just going to have to share my entire screen and then hopefully that works. Can you guys see the pictures now? Can you guys see who I'm shouting out now? Let me know if you can see it. Let me, can you guys see it now? Okay. Ashley, um, Sharice, congratulations. Jamira or Jameer, I'm sorry. Ari, um, congratulations. Anna, oh no, I'm sorry. Anna was asking a question. Johanna, congratulations. I got something popping up here. Let me exit that out. Um, Miss Heaven Sent, congratulations, Tammy from Louisiana. Um, Kazakin, Ruby, KW, Makeup Mama, Rosa, Tanya, Brenda, congratulations, Keandra, congratulations, and the life of Mama, congratulations, Anna, congratulations. I can't make this. I think it says something shorty. Sorry, guys. T Vlogs, congratulations. Impress, congratulations. Lizbeth, Kimberly, Keldum's World, Stacy, Lexi Vlog, Chocolate Girl, Deanna, congratulations. And that is it. So 
like I said, it's a lot of you guys that 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 passed this time. So that's why it took me a minute to um that's why I didn't have time to upload this. Let me go this Chrome and then let me go back to this. That's why I didn't have time to add it to the presentation. But congratulations, everybody. Hey Veronica, congratulations, everybody. This is your first time joining. I always like to shout out people who pass their tests. Like I said, I didn't get a chance to add it to the presentation. I just got home um, and I just wanted to get on here as promised and do a little bit of exam practice with you guys and then see if anybody has any questions. I've been okay, Veronica, just very busy. I've had a lot going on. That's why I, that's why I haven't been able to go live. But I said I need to do it. A few people have been asking me about this exam practice. People have tests coming up. So I wanted to get on here and just do a little bit. So we shouted everybody out. And you guys know the routine. Here are some tips before we begin. If there's anybody that's joining for the first time, make sure your life is revolving around this test, okay? Any medical assistant groups on Facebook, I just recommended this to another person the other day because they emailed me about um, if I had any printouts. The reason why I recommend joining the Facebook groups is because I noticed that people share information there. So I don't have any printed information but somebody else may have a uh, printed information. For an example, we used to get the CCMA and CMAA uh, practice tests um, as a printed test, but we don't anymore. But some people, they still have access to it or maybe the RMA or CMA. So that's why I say join those groups and see what somebody may can share with you. And also pay close attention to wrong answers when you're taking your practice test. Don't focus more on the questions than you do on the actual content. I say that every time. Don't go into these exams thinking you're going to see the exact same questions that you see on your practice test. Focus on studying the content and not the actual questions, okay? Create flashcards and have family members quiz you. This is a good thing to do to make sure you understand the information, okay? Um, pay close attention to each question and pay attention to keywords. Keywords like, what do you do first? What is the first thing you do, right? Um, what do you do prior to, you know, whatever? Prior, first, initially, pay attention to those keywords. Um, incorrect, right? Um, um, what is the incorrect um, um, thing to do? And that's the key word because sometimes you read too fast and you think they're asking you what is the correct thing to do and you end up, you see the correct answer and you choose it. And the whole time they were asking, what is something that is incorrect, okay? Use process of elimination. Some questions you see, you may get correct simply by eliminating things that you know are incorrect. You might not necessarily know the right answer, but you may be able to eliminate answers that you absolutely know are incorrect, and that helps you to arrive at the right answer, okay? Answer your easy questions first, and you want to flag or bookmark questions to come back to later that are difficult or that you need more time to spend on, right? So if you have those questions that you can fly through, get through those. But if you notice you're taking your test and you get to a question that you need to spend some time on, bookmark it and come back to it because those three hours go by quickly. Okay, let me just look at these comments. Oh, Mayra, and Myra, I'm sorry, is it Myra? Um, she's in New Mexico. She's taking her exam on the 22nd. Okay. Which exam are you taking, Myra? Um, Melinda. Hey, Melinda. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm happy. Which, which test did you take? Imani, watching from upstate New York. I've been out of school for over a year and I'm taking a CCMA. Okay. October 28th. Okay. Which, okay. She's taking a CCMA. Chantel. Oh, Chantel's watching from Jamaica. Hey, Chantel. I'm, I'm going to be over there with you soon. Um, Brenda. Thank you, sis. Thank you, Miss K. You really helped me. I thought I was going to fail. <laughs> Brenda, I'm glad you passed and I'm glad you're here. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, I don't have a lot. I just have a few. I just got home, so I didn't have time to do a lot. But I promise you guys I'm going to do more soon. It's just been very, very busy for me. Melinda says she's in Texas and she said everything you said was true. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, Melinda. I try to do my best to give you guys um, what I know. All right, so let's see. All right, guys, the purpose of an ACO or accountable care organization is to increase the quality of care for patients who have which insurance? The purpose of an ACO, accountable care organization, is to increase the quality of care for patients who have which insurance? 
Hey, Robin, good to have you here. Robin is also from upstate New York. Robin, remind me of which test you're taking. I remember you were here before, but I can't remember um, or which test that you that you have taken. I definitely remember your name. Congratulations, Tanya. Tanya, I'm, I, I did see that you did let me know. I'll make sure I shout you out on the next video. Some, some, some of the recent comments I wasn't able to shout out tonight because I was so backed up with other people that I, I, I never shouted out before, but I'll get you next time. Congratulations. All right. What's, uh, which um, insurance says the accountable care organization helps to increase the quality of patients for which insurance? Which insurance? Okay. I see Medicare. All right. Let's see. And that is correct. So Medicare, the ACO's purpose is to increase the quality of care for patients that have Medicare. CCMA student from Indiana. Hey, Aaron, nice to have you here. All righty, let's see. Which of the following has the slowest release into the bloodstream? Buccal, transdermal, intramuscular, or sublingual? The slowest. This is another example of paying attention to keywords, the slowest release into the bloodstream. The slowest release. The slowest release into the bloodstream. Look at each option. Oh, Dita says, I take my CCMA tomorrow morning. Okay, Dita, we are wishing you the best. We hope you pass. Which of the following has the slowest release into the bloodstream? Give you guys a couple minutes. I don't see anything popping up just yet. Oh, let me click on live. Okay, so I see transdermal, I see buccal, I see sublingual, I see sublingual, I see intramuscular. Sandra's watching from Antigua. Hey, Sandra, nice to have you here. The slowest release. All right, let's see what this is. This is going to be transdermal. See, a few of you did say transdermal. Transdermal has the slowest release of all, okay? Everything else mentioned um, has more of a quicker release, but the transdermal has the slowest release of all, okay? That is topical. Transdermal is across the skin, right? That's a topical, like a topical patch or a topical cream or ointment, okay? That has the slowest release into the into the um, bloodstream. Another example of a transdermal medication is the nitroglycerin patch um, that a patient has to wear if, um, like, if they have heart issues, like chest pain and things like that, um, angina. So it's going to be transdermal. So remember that. Um, okay, let's see. Oops. Vital signs are documented in this section of a soap note. Oh, yeah, birth control patch. Yep, that's another example of a transdermal medication. Thank you, Imani. Vital signs are documented in this section of a soap note. Give you guys a couple minutes. Vital signs. Okay, I see objective. Okay. I see you guys are on a yes objective. Many people get the subjective and objective um, sections mixed up. I love the way one of the nurses um, put it that I worked with. She said, think about when you're when you're getting a mixed up subjective and objective. First of all, we know subjective is what the patient tells us. Right. So that's the patient's symptoms that they tell us. Right. Objective is what we can measure or what we can see. So one the one of the ways the nurse um, 
um, she a simple way she put it. Is it something that like she said, think about your senses. Like, is it something that you can see, feel, right, or touch or smell? If it's something that you can see, touch, smell, hear, right, that's objective. Whereas subjective is something that the patient told you. I feel, I feel um, nauseous, right? I have a headache. My 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 chest hurts. That's subjective, and objective is, of course, anything you can measure or see yourself. Yep, subjective is what they say. Objective is what we see or can measure. Yep, Miss Four Twelve, baby. All right. The provider's diagnoses are di are documented in this section of a soap note. The provider's diagnoses are documented in this section of a soap note. Okay, I see assessment. Another person says assessment. All right, I'm seeing up mostly assessment. Let's see. Yep. And you guys are correct. Assessment. So assessment. So first of all, SOAP, we know is subjective, objective assessment and plan. So assessment is the doctor's thoughts, is the doctor's either what the doctor has diagnosed the patient with or what the doctor assumes the patient is dealing with. Right. So let's just say the doctor thinks that the patient may have you know, um, pneumonia based on his or her symptoms. Right. So that's the assessment. And then they want to confirm it with a chest X-ray. So the chest X-ray will go in their plan, right? So the assessments are the diagnosis, right? Their thoughts or what they think the patient has. It may be an assumed diagnosis. And then the plan is, of course, what they plan to do to confirm their diagnosis. Or if they're sure of the diagnosis, the plan is also where they will write or document the prescription they're going to write for the patient, a referral they're going to generate. Um, when they want to see the patient again, any blood work or labs, uh, other labs and things like that. All right. So it looks like you guys have a pretty good grasp on um, soap notes. So that's good. All right. What type of software allows you to sort and combine patient reports? So this type of software allows you to sort and combine patient reports. And notice I only had that one. Um, that one multiple choice question. So I told you guys I want to make sure I'm doing some um, some um, open-ended questions with you guys just to see where your head is, to see, like I said, if you know it, then you know it. This one might, I know this one might be a little bit more difficult to just know right offhand unless you um, have been taken NHA's practice test. You might already know this one. So I know this one is a little bit more difficult to just know right off the top of your head without seeing the options. But like I said, if you have the practice test, you'll probably just know it. Okay, so I said someone says EHR. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go scroll to the right answer so you'll know. So, so this is database management. So as I said, I know this one is gonna be more difficult unless you've been seeing it, but um, of course, you know, the questions won't be open ended, but if you know that it's database management, that is the software that allows you to sort and combine patient reports. Then when you see it on the practice, on the actual exam, then you know it because you will see an option for word processor or Microsoft Word. You will see an option for Microsoft Excel or spreadsheets. You'll see um, what's the other one? Outlook for emails or calendar. Right. So that way, now, you know, database management software allows you to generate patient reports. OK. Um, Imani says, have anyone used your practice videos for a AMCA? 
So AMCA, so um, I think you said you're taking the CCMA through AMCA. So um, if you're taking a CCMA, and then my videos are absolutely going to help you because these videos are geared toward the CCMA. I'm guessing when you say AMCA, um, are, is, I'm guessing that's the organization that's administering the CCMA. So the CCMA is the exam itself. And then you have the um, organizations like NHA or... Um, AMT or AAMA that administers the test. So yes, the CCMA exam, yes. Um, and I've actually never heard of AMCA. What does that stand for, Imani? Let me know what that stands for. Miss 412 Baby says, what are the, are the test questions, multiple choice or fill-in? They're all multiple choice, all multiple choice. The only reason why I'm doing it this way is because this is what I do with my students when I really want to test their knowledge because when you're doing um, multiple choice, which is good, I'll go back to doing tests, you know, practice tests like that again. But I've been doing open ended to really test your knowledge, because this is one of the ways that I always recommend you to test yourself. That's why I said make flashcards, because if you know it right off the top of your head, then you will know it when you see it. OK, um, but database management, like I said, I know this was one of those questions that you probably wouldn't know right away. But if you see it, you'll know it. Unless you've been taking a practice test, if you've been taking a bunch of a practice test, then you'll prob you probably would have picked up on it that it was database management. You're welcome, Dita. You're welcome. And it's normal to be nervous. All right, let me go to the next one. And then, um, Imani, don't forget, write out AMCA. This is actually my first time hearing of that. Oh, she did. American Medical Certification Association. Let me make a note of that. I never heard of them before. Thank you, Imani. So, yeah. Um, that is the uh, that is the organization that is administering the CCMA. Um, but I will tell you this: I would just make sure to get their practice test. Just make sure it's the same. The thing about all of these exams, and I've said this before, the general information is going to be on there. I mean, it's going to be on all of the tests, right? There's some just general things that you need to know for each test. However, I always recommend getting the practice test for that specific specific organization just to make sure example i always give so on one um certification exam assault is defined as an attempt or a threat to harm another person and then on another exam it's actually defined as actual touching and harming the patient okay that's why i say make sure because you want to make sure you have that exact definition for that exam Right. So I've had people tell me they passed the RMA watching my videos and also the CMA. But I don't go over those those um, those exams. Right. So, you know, even though people they pass, I still recommend getting a practice test for those actual exams just to make sure you don't miss anything. Miss Fortswell baby said, OK, I understand. I'm happy for the open ended whether I get them wrong or not. I second guess myself. I said database. Oh, OK, so you did know it was database. OK, and it's OK. The event, if you want to get anything wrong, this is the place to get it wrong. This is a safe place. This is why we do this. Um, so that way you're really, um, you know, quizzing yourself. I would rather you really just leave your notes, like put your notes down and really quiz yourself as opposed to trying to rumble through your notes just to get the answer right. Right. Um, definitely want you to take notes, though, but I would rather you really, really quiz yourself to see where you are. All right. Which electrode is placed at the fifth intercostal space left at the left mid clavicular line? The fifth intercostal space at the left mid clavicular line. Which electrode is that? And each of the tests, you need to know EKG placements. Now, does that mean you're going to have a bunch of EKG questions? Not necessarily. But it is something that is general that you need to know for these medical assistant exams. OK. You do need to know this. So if, if this is something that you struggle with, make a note to make sure you know each placement for each um, electrode. OK. I see V4. V4 is correct. Yeah, I know y'all placements. You know your placements. So if you are watching this and you know this is an area in which you struggle, just make sure 
you know, you go back and look at those. I do have a video on this channel where I go over the chest leads, right? I don't do the leg and arms because that's the easy, um, that's the easy placements. But if you, if you need a refresher, I do have that on this channel where I show you on the actual skeleton. All right, which electrode is placed at the fourth intercostal space on the left side of the sternum? Left of the sternum, it should say, not left side of the sternum. Well, left of, yeah, left of the sternum, it should say. But you guys get the gist of what I'm asking, right? The left of the sternum. Left of the sternum. Fourth intercostal space, left of the sternum. All right, let's see. Yep, V2. V2, one thing to remember is that your patient's left is your right. So I didn't see anybody put V1 on it, which is good, because most of the time I ask that question, people say V1 because they're thinking of their of their left um but yeah so uh, with their left or their right they're looking at the patient and and sometimes you make the mistake of looking at your patient and you're thinking their right is your right and vice versa but yes v2 so again ekg placements if it's something you struggle with make sure you um go over those and make sure you know those okay all right let's see true or false the patient's medical record belongs to the patient. Now, of course, on a test, there are no true or false questions. It's all multiple choice. So don't look at this and expect to see this type of question. This is just something that I do. But it's not on the test. Does the patient's medical record belong to the patient? I see, I see true, I see mostly false, I see a couple of trues. Okay, let's see. All right, that's false. The medical record does not belong to the patient. It belongs to the practice. However, the patient does have a right to their information. So the information is theirs. That's the information. They have a right to it, but the medical record does not belong to the patient. Okay, the physical medical record, we should say, right? does not belong to the patient, but they have a right to their information. So that is going to be false. All right. If you're entering a medication into a patient's electronic medical record and you get an interaction alert, what's the first thing you should do? So you're putting in the patient's medical record and putting the medication in into the medical record. That's the good thing about e EMR or EHR, electronic medical record. Um, when you put in a medication that interacts with another medication on their list, that's already on their list in the chart, you'll get an alert. So what do you do if you get an alert? What should you do when you get that alert? Okay, someone says talk to the provider, inform the physician, notify provider, and have them find a new medication, inform the physician, notify, close the screen out, and tell the provider. Okay, let's see. Yep, so you want to consult with the provider before continuing to process the prescription. So you want to let the provider know, you know, Hey, Miss Such and Such, um, I was putting in this medication and it's saying that it's interacting with her with her blood pressure medication. Is it okay? Like, what should I do with this? And the doctor may say, it's okay, you know, that's normal that this comes up, right? And then you'll go ahead and enter the medication in. Because sometimes in some cases it is it is a situation where some medications interact, but it's okay to take, right? Some medications can't be taken. 
together, right? Then that's a contraindication where if a patient is on one thing, they absolutely cannot take another thing, right? But in some cases, maybe it's just an interaction the provider is okay with, then they'll tell you that it's okay, go ahead and, you know, or they may say, well, let me talk to Miss jones or whoever and let me let and let me talk to her first before you put that in because it could be that another provider could have prescribed that medication not realizing that the provider you work for has her on this other medication and if they knew that they probably wouldn't have prescribed it in the first place so it's always safe to let the provider know all right what can cause a wandering baseline on an ekg wandering baseline and so this is another thing you want to know you want to know what causes wandering baseline on the ekg what causes um somatic tear on the ekg and what causes um artifacts you definitely want to know those things so make a note of that if that's something you don't know because you may see those um you may see that on the um test as well. It's definitely on a practice test, so definitely want to know it. Wandering baseline. I said somatic tear. I meant somatic tremor. Thank you, Chantel. Because <laughs> I said somatic tear. All right, so this is another one where when you see the options, you'll definitely know it for sure. There's going to be patient movement. Now, um, Chantel put somatic tremor. So somatic tremor is caused by, um, um, oh, man, wait a minute. Uh, muscle, uh, muscle, um, muscle spasms. A disconnected lead can cause it to. Um, depending on the EKG machine, the disconnected lead will probably not read at all. Normally with a disconnected lead, um, depending on your machine, most of, most of the time it won't even read an EKG at all. Okay, let's see this. All right. A patient has a potassium level of 5 MEQ. Is this normal or abnormal? Five uh, milli equivalents per liter. Is this normal or abnormal? Potassium level of five. Again, you guys want to know your um, your normal ranges for your um, common blood tests like potassium, glucose, sodium, hematocrit, and hemoglobin. Um, what else? Um, um, I want it in your blood cells, your CBC. So your normal range for your red blood cell, white blood cell, and platelets. Want to know those ranges? I I'm going to do a video with all the normal ranges. I've actually already started it. It's just a matter of finishing it. But I did start creating a um, presentation, something like this, where I go all where I go through the normal ranges for blood work and vital signs. Okay, I see mostly normal. Um, normal. The normal range for potassium is 3.5 to 5.1. So when you know that range, you know um, any number that they put out there for you, you'll know whether it's normal or abnormal. But that's normal. The range is 3.5 to 5.1, and the patient has a 5. So this is going to be normal. So again... Make sure you know those um, ranges. All right, let's see. Chickenpox is caused by what microorganism?
Sorry, guys. One second. I'm, my daughter just texted me. She's at band practice. Hold on one second. Okay, I see varicella virus. I see zoster. Let's see. Yes, y'all know y'all stuff. Varicella zoster virus. That is correct. Yes, that is correct. Y'all are ready. Okay. All righty. A patient has a platelet count of 300. Is this normal or abnormal? 300 for a platelet count. What is this? Is it normal or abnormal? Is that a lot? Is that not enough? What is that? Okay, I see abnormal, I see normal, I see a mix. Well, I see mostly abnormal, one normal, let's see. 300. All right, let's see. So this is also normal. So add this to your notes, 130 to 400. So that's going to be normal, okay? Know your blood ranges. Know your blood work ranges. That's 300 is normal. All right, so let's see what this next one is. All right, sodium. It's, oh, wait a minute. I think I might have, um, I think I may have, um, but go ahead, sodium, sodium 300. I'm sorry, guys. I think I may have messed up on this one. This should be, wait a minute. I think I'm. I think I may have a typo. Hold on, but go ahead and answer. Three hundred. Uh, 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 um, three hundred. What do you What do you guys think that is? In the meantime, I need to. I think I. I think I. Um, hold on one second. I don't think I meant to write that like that. Hold on. Yeah, I'm sorry guys. Let me fix that right now because I don't I don't even want that. Um hold on, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for one second. Um, but you you guys, I see you all are still answering based on that, but that's fine. Let me fix that. Um sodium is measured in um that's because I copy and pasted this as I was um I copy and pasted it from the last um um, from the last question that had the MM3, but this should be MEQ per liter. So I'm just fixing it. Oh, I got it correct on the answer. All right. So let me present this again and share my screen. All right. So let's see. So those of you, everybody said abnormal. So you all got that correct. So this is abnormal. So the range for sodium is 135 to 145, okay? And that's measured in MEQ per liters. Sorry about that. So 135 to 145 for sodium. So again, make sure you all are 
um, making a note of these ranges as I'm giving them to you. Also, on your practice tests, your, your, um, your study guides, you'll also have your ranges as well. And like I said, I am working on a, a video that I'm going to be doing soon, giving you all the ranges that you need to know for vital signs and your blood work, okay? All right, um, what's the birthday rule? What is the birthday rule? And I know that's a lot to kind of type out, so you could just keep it short as possible. Just to just to let me know you know what it is. The birthday rule. Like I said, you could be as short as possible. You don't have to write all of that out. Okay, the child will go into that. Okay, okay, okay. So, rule that's used to determine which of the parents' insurance plan. Okay, all right. Yep, the policy of the parent who has the earliest birth month is the child's primary insurance. Yes, so you guys are all correct. You all said it in a different ways, but you're correct. So, with the birthday rule, um, and this is for for people um, who have joint custody or if the parents are married, right? So if the parents are married or they both have joint custody, whoever's birthday is first in the year, right, is the child's primary insurance. Um, now, if they, let's just say it's a situation where they are not married and they don't have joint custody, the primary insurance is going to be um, the custodial parent. Okay. So that's going to be the custodial parent. That's going to be the parent who has custody, full custody of the child. Okay. Or unless the judge, um, appoints the person who's going to have primary insurance. So let's just say the mom is the custodial parent, but maybe the father is it for whatever reason, the judge appoints the father's insurance as primary, then that is so. But for the most part, if they don't have joint custody, then it's going to be the custodial parent. OK, and this is, of course, if both parents have family coverage, if parents have just individual coverage and only themselves. So let's say mom and dad, they both have insurance, but mom only has individual insurance insurance. So, of course, dad is going to be primary because dad only is the only one with family insurance. OK. All right. Uh, the provider orders 375 milligrams of a medication and you have 250 milligram tablets available. How many tablets will you give the patient? So the doctor ordered 375 and you have 250. How many tablets will you give the patient? Okay, I see 1.5. Tablet and a half, 1.5. Okay, looks like everybody's on the same page. Yep, so that's going to be 1.5. So simple, 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 simple formula. You want to divide the doctor's order by what you have on hand. Okay, so D over H. Desired dose is the D. H is what you have on hand. So D over H equals how much you give the patient. So what the doctor ordered divided by what you have. Okay. 
and that's going to give us a tablet and a half or 1.5 tablets okay all right guys so as i said i didn't have a lot for you all tonight i just got home not too long ago just wanted to get a little bit of, of studying in with you guys tonight i hope this was helpful um i've been very busy but i'm trying to get it i'm trying to get back to going live more and doing more of these exam practice sessions with you all and q a um and even putting up more videos so I hope that this was helpful. If it was helpful, exit out of the chat and go ahead and like the video for me. And you can comment if you have any questions. Let me know. I'll give it a few minutes just to see if anybody has any questions. You're welcome. You're welcome. Always welcome. Uh, Masharia, I hope I'm saying your name correct. I live in D.C. as well. Oh, I thought you were saying you live in D.C. I'm sorry. You said I'm in California time. Do you get on live out in D.C.? Okay, I'm sorry, Mishari. I thought you were saying you live in D.C., but you're in California. <laughs> sorry about that. So it's three hour difference. So I get on 630. That's 978. Seven, eight. Yeah, 930 for you guys. And normally, I, normally 630 is the time. It used to be later at 8 p.m. But because I leave out to go pick my daughter up for band practice, I um, have changed it to 630. If I ever change, I will let you know. You're welcome. Linda says, get some rest. I plan to. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> um, I have some more videos coming up for you guys. Um, I actually have videos that I've recorded already. It's just a matter of editing them. That's the biggest thing. Usually I'll um, record the videos all at one time because I have a couple, actually three channels now that I record videos for. So I try to do them all in one day. And then the, the, the problem is, um, editing and getting it posted. Okay. Skylar says she takes her test this weekend. Okay. Skylar, which test are you taking Skylar? You may have already told me. I, I don't, I think I missed it, but let me know what test you're taking. You're welcome. Thank you guys for getting on. Chantel. Hey, Joe, Diana, Imani, Myra. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, Diana says, what's the passing grade for NHA? So it's going to be 390. I heard they may be changing it. I'm not exactly sure. But right now it's 390. So the perfect score is 500 and you need at least a 390. Um, will a month preparation? Oh, yes, definitely, Imani. Definitely. I think a month is great. You just know, um, just know during that time, just don't get too relaxed. I always tell people don't wait too long to take your test. You want to take it while it's fresh on your mind. So just don't get too relaxed. I don't want you to stress yourself out. But at the same time, just, you know, keep the information in front of you. And I feel like a month, it gives you enough time to set a schedule like, OK, Monday and Wednesday, I'm going to work on terminology or whatever you know i'm going to study my blood ranges if you have the study guide you might say okay on monday i'm going to go through module one wednesday i'm going to go through module two you know so just set a schedule um she's taking a ccbma i don't know i don't know if the b is a typo is that a typo a ccbma i know the ccma um CCMA NHA. Okay, Skylar. Um, I, I I hope and pray that you pass on Sky on Saturday. Let me know as soon as you take your test, Skylar. No problem, Diana. Imani says she's been out of school for over a year. Oh, okay. So I see. Okay, you've been out of school for a year. So you're doing a refresher. Do you have the study guide and practice test? If not, I definitely recommend getting it, Imani. Just so you can um get get a refresher. NHA is um, National Health Careers Association. That is the organizations that administers the CCMA exam as well as the um, CMAA exam. No problem. Um, so clinical and basic. Okay. So I've never heard of that. Maybe that's something they do in California. I've, I've never heard of that um, um, CCBMA, clinical and basic. Um but yes, I believe they'll help, but I always recommend making sure you get this practice test for that 
organization. Which organization is it, Masharia, that's that's administering the test? Here is NHA. Okay, and Imani, I know you say yours is AMCA. Where are you located, Imani? Let me scroll up. You may have already told me. Let me see. Oh, New York. You're in New York. Um, and see, I'm having this channel. I, this has been helping me out too because I'm I'm learning so much with you all being from different places. I'm learning so much about how things are different in different states. Like I didn't know New York. One of one of you guys that live in New York told me you can't do injections in New York. So I'm learning so much from you guys being in different different states. I'm hearing about different organizations I've never heard of, different tests. Yeah, Macharya. So I would just make sure you um, are make sure you have the study guide that goes with that test, because these exam practice ex reviews that I do, this is for um, this is NHA's version of the CCMA. So I've had people to pass, you know, other tests with my videos, but. I, you know, I don't, I wouldn't recommend just only, you know, watching these videos. I definitely recommend trying to get that just so you don't miss anything because um, I may not cover everything. And even when I do, like normally the sessions are longer than this. And even when they are longer, I only do maybe about, I want to say 20 questions, maybe 20 to 25 questions a session. So it's definitely a lot that I'm missing. Oh, you were in school in New Jersey. Okay, got you. Okay, first time here in the ACMA. Okay, she said, I guess it's a California thing. Actually, it's a California. Okay, oh, California. Cert okay, certifying board of medical assistant. Okay. Yeah, Diana, you can give uh, injections in Louisiana. Um, Jim Pisa, no, no website for, not for this anyway. I have a, a couple of websites, but not for this. So one of the videos I recorded, like I said, I have a few recorded is, um, I talk about the other things I do outside of medical assistant and I'm going to get that video edited and posted soon, but I do uh, some other things outside of teaching medical assistant. Um, so yeah, I do have a website, but not for this. All right, guys, any more questions? I don't want to log out. I just want to make sure I got a few more minutes. Um, make sure. Okay, I'll wait a few. I'll wait another few seconds. You can have a membership access something. Oh, you know what, Jim Pisa? They do that on YouTube. Um, they do have a, a way that you can have a membership. They they do do that on, on um if I did that, I would want to be able to dedicate time. The thought has definitely crossed my mind to come up with a Facebook group or something, but I would need to have the time to dedicate to it. There's a forensic technician in Canada. I know that does that provides a lot of info. Yeah, that's definitely a good idea, Jim. If I had if I de if I had the time, I would definitely do it. I just want I just would want to make sure I would be able to, you know, give that time and be available. OK, I don't see any other questions. I just want to make sure I don't want to exit out and someone's asking a question. No problem. You're welcome, Jim. Thank you for being on here. I'm glad you caught the live. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and log out of here. You guys have a good night. Be safe. I don't know where you all are located, but for those of you that's located um, near the hurricane, uh, um, my prayers are with you guys. Um, I have a friend whose daughter is down in college, so she's dealing with that right now. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and exit out of here. I do, like I said, have some other videos coming. I just have to edit them. So you all have a good night and be safe. Good night, Veronica. You too. You be blessed as well. Good night, Diana. 
All right, guys, y'all take care.